Okay. Uh, one more time through this. Um, I've got a graph of a function put up here. We would call this a cubic function because we have uh, x being cubed. Okay. Um, and I put this point here and I labeled it as 5, 3. Just to, again, reemphasize uh, something before we, <clears throat> before we look at a different type of problem. Remember that all of these points, okay, and this gets lost on people sometimes, and that's why, you know, this we're, we're slowing things down a little bit. Every single piece that's on this black line, that's a point, okay, and, or black curve, I should say. And every single one of these points has an X and a Y coordinate, and every X and Y coordinate is the result of this function right here. So this value right here, this is our X. This value right here, this is our f of x, right? Now we want to call that y because x and y, that's the traditional way to look at it, and that's fine, okay? I just want everybody to understand before we look at this next problem, what this point right here is saying is that when you take the function f and you plug in the number 5, the result of this is a y value of 3, right? The x-coordinate goes in here. The y-coordinate is the result. The reason I'm showing you this one more time is for problems like this that you're going to get on the math Excel. Okay. So this problem says use the graph of G to find G of seven, right? This is always the input. That's our X coordinate. So what they're saying is this has a value G of seven. And when X is seven, which is right here, there's a point that exists, which is down here. Okay. So this point has an X coordinate of seven. And you can see from here that it has a Y coordinate of negative eight. So when seven is the input into this function, the output is negative eight. And that's why this point has a coordinate of seven, negative eight. So G of seven, think of this as, what is the output for function G when the input is seven? In this case, we get negative eight. This is just a, a different way of, we're still evaluating a function. We're giving the function a value when we give it an input value here. So we're evaluating the function graphically, okay, instead of algebraically like we were doing with these problems, okay? Something a little different for you.